Hey everybody, Will from MachineLoveUs.com, back with uh, another video in the series on scraping uh, company data, startup data, tracking startups. And so what I want to go over today is uh, visualizing the data that we've pulled thus far uh, with Bokeh and doing some basic visualizations. If you haven't been following along with the series, that's fine. I'm just going to pull some data that I've been storing, scraping and storing in from a database that I've been saving locally, uh, show you how to pull it from a Mongo database that I've set up, and then how to visualize it, uh, inspect it, uh, do some basic things with pandas and bokeh. So bokeh is a Python uh, visualization uh, library. It's very popular, allows for interactive graphics on the web. Uh, so if you're doing interactive visualization on the web, if you like Python, you should look into Bokeh. If you, um, another option is D3JS, but that is uh, very JavaScript focused. So um, there you go. If you want to do interactive visualizations on the web, Bokeh is a great choice. Okay, so I have this Python 3 uh, Jupyter Notebook. I'm going to import pandas. You normally, uh, the standard syntax is import pandas as PD. I have this config. Now config is where in the last video we set up uh, the config is how we connect to our database. And I'm just going to grab the code that we wrote last time and just instead of putting that there, put uh, the actual code. So it's PyMongo. And what we're doing is we're connecting to our local PyMongo database. And I'm connecting to a database that's called Startup Tracker, Start Tracker. And so you could see I have RoboMongo here, which allows me to view the Start Tracker collection in which I've saved the uh, startups themselves. And this JSON, this essentially JSON, these dictionaries are the data that we scraped. We scraped. Uh, at the end of the video, my battery died, but I have 1,700 companies in here now. So we have the very beginnings of a database of startups. Okay, so what I could do next is get a list of the companies. I'm gonna zoom in on this code so you could see it. So from the database, from the database collection companies, find all of those companies that have raised more than zero dollars, right? So you could see that's uh, 1,027. And then I can take a look and inspect the first one that comes back, which is Instamotor. So we could do something like uh, find those companies that have raised more than a million. Three, four, five, six. That is a million, million dollars. <clears throat> Uh, which is only 920, so we lost a few. Okay, so we still have Instamotor, and then we could, you know, sort of, this is a list of dictionaries that we returned here, so we could take a look at different startups that are returned. Okay, so f what you can do with pandas now is, because this is a list of dictionaries, and this is my preferred way of making a data frame, is we can we could take that list of dictionaries and convert it straight into a data frame with pandas pd.dataframe and put in that list of dictionaries. And when we get back, zoom out a little bit, uh, if I do df.head, which will give me the first five observations, are uh, all of the, the actual data, the ID, and then all of the data for these companies that have raised over a million dollars. So it's kind of annoying here is that our data is still a bit dirty. We have stage in front and website in front of the website. We can fix that later on. But for now, our purpose is just inspecting this data and eventually visualizing it. Okay, so what I'd like to do is visualize this data by market. You could see this market is right here and that's the the type of startup that they are. So I want to see for each market in our data set the, the amounts that have been raised for that market. So what I could do is a group by. So how group by works is 
I can make a new data frame, which I'll call market data frame. And it groups by, and here's the column. You could group by multiple columns. So you could group by, you know, we have location. So you could do location and market uh, if we wanted to. Let's, let's try that. And what I'm going to do is sum the values. What this reset index will do is actually give me a new data frame instead of a group by object. And so uh, this first piece here is an unknown or unspecified value. But see, the, the highest, I think this is sorted correctly. So let's see, let's do sort values on raised. He's going up. Okay, and then I need to do ascending equals false. So uh, unknown, unspecified in New York City has the most, but this collaborative consumption market, I'm not sure what that is. Um, and San Francisco has, has raised the second most uh, after this unknown and then video streaming in LA startups in Asia so startups and databases are more general categories which come from the data that we scrape but are not as useful I think as something like online retail in San Bruno this might be like one these might be one or two startups here that are leading the pack which is why we're seeing these these big valuations but you can see San Francisco is, is also leading the pack in a lot of these uh, raised locations, which isn't surprising. Okay, so that's how to use group by. I'm just going to do by market itself and then investigate and see that uh, that we do get a data frame back. And then what we could do is well, let me, I'm not going to drop any data yet. Uh, but what I am going to do is, is work with this data a little bit. Now, collaborative consumption. So collaborative consumption is such a long word that it obscures our chart. And I actually want to rename it. Uh, but to do that, I need to figure out where it's located in the index. Uh, and so again, I do ascending equals false here to sort this. Collaborative consumption is the second most after this just blank unknown. And actually, I want to rename that too to unknown. So let's do that. So this is at index zero, and this is at index forty-six. So those are important here. And that's you know why isn't in it why isn't it uh, index one or two? And it's because we sorted on that column. So at market data frame dot at will give us the location of index 46 right uh, and for the column market and the value there is collaborative consumption so what we can do is actually just just set it we'll just set it to collab consump and then for the first one this unknown value I'm just gonna set that to unknown now this took me a, a couple tries to figure out so i just did help help actually on the class itself looks like a class and i and i get back the documentation right in line here another way you can do this is look at iat which may also is another way of indexing into the data frame and taking a look at data values so you could do this right in line in a jupyter notebook which is great so now we have if we do head again on our data frame, now instead of that just dash, we have unknown. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is visualize the uh, visualize the markets and the raise to get a sense of how much is being raised here. And I'm going to import these things from Bokeh. Um, so show will give us the plot. Uh, output notebook. What this allows us to do is actually output the figure in line inside the notebook, which is really useful. Just from bokeh plotting, import figure. And then column data source is how we feed data traditionally to a bokeh figure. So we'll want to import that. OK, 
Okay, so I'm going to sort uh, my data frame again by raised. Now I want to get a list of the markets so that I can pass it eventually to the plot. Numeral tick formatter, uh, it will come in handy later. So I'm going to put it back up here to format the ticks on our plot. And I'll show you what I mean in just a bit. Um, I import math. I'm not sure exactly why, but I'm going to move that import. Uh, eventually, to clean this up, I would move it, all these imports all the way to the top just to organize things. So let's get into the chart itself. Okay, so our source of data is the data frame, the market data frame itself. And then this is the syntax for the chart. So figure in Xtrain's markets. Remember, markets is the list of markets that we set before. So these are all the markets that we want to look at. And I didn't realize that there are so many of them. So this might be a problem later on to just see all of the different things that we could look at. You have local services, diabetes, childcare, Southeast Asia, outsourcing, sensors. So there's a lot of markets here. Anyway, so x range in markets, you could set the plot height, you could set the title, you could set the toolbar location and tools. For now, for our basic plot, I'm not gonna do any tools, but it, they're easy to set up and they allow some interaction, which which is really the great thing about Bouquet. I'm going to do just do a column or bar chart, vertical bar. Uh, the X here is market. So in our column data source or the X axis, the column name is market and the the vertical bar is raised. So for those markets, for those markets in X range, um, pick out the market, uh, the bars length is by raised you could set the color you don't have to i just set it to gray you can do whatever you want there uh, i used the default width of 0.9 um i'm actually curious to see what happens if i don't set that and then i feed in the source as the source and then let's see let me not do this formatting yet and just show you okay so actually you do need to feed in the width So let me put the width back. Doesn't have a default. Okay. And so raised by market. So a few things. Uh, one, we can't read the x-axis. So we have no idea what these markets are. Two, what are these values on the y-axis here? It, and they don't make any sense. So let's start with the y-axis. What we could do is do uh, numeral tick formatter. So this formatter will allow us to format uh, the y-axis into dollars. Uh, we can do a couple different things with dollars, but the format that I pick that I'm going to pass in here will allow us to get it into the billions of dollars, which is really useful to see. So instead of scientific notation, we could see our we range from uh, up to $10 billion raised. Okay, I'm going to leave this x-axis off here. So what can we do? This is really unintelligible right now. And what I decided to do for now is just, let's just plot the top 5% or pick a quantile that we want to plot. So what I can do up at the top here is do something where our market data frame is going to be we're going to only keep those values that have raised that are in the top uh, above the 95% of raised in the market. So this will cut off a lot of the markets and we'll just be able to keep those markets that have raised the most money. And because I put it way back up here, I actually put it right, essentially right after the group buy. Um, I could just rerun all of everything we just ran. And now you could see that this is a lot more reasonable as a chart, but still the, the labels down here are cutting into each other, which is why uh, for the x-axis, we have ma major label orientation. And what we could do is just do something, um, you get in math.py, that's why I imported math, is to flip uh, these labels by an orientation by a certain amount of degrees and I just experimented it with it so you could do 
you know, vertical, which is math that pi uh, divided by two, but that really constrained the, the chart itself. So just playing around, I, I landed on nine. And so what do we have at the end here? We have the top 5% by market raised of um, startups in our database. Uh, the vast amount are unknown, but after that is collaborative consumption. I'd like to find out what startups are in, are labeled as collaborative consumption. Maybe it's just one here. And what does that mean? And then further on video streaming technology startups, these are kind of technology startups, kind of broad labels. Uh, and then moving down online rental, mobile payments, advertising, games, networking, etc. So we have this initial visualization that we've done with Bokeh, uh, we can easily add interactions to this, but I'm going to stop here. In the next video, I think I'm going to go to the websites of all of the companies in our database and try to get news about them and store that news in a different collection or search Google for news so that we could get another data pipeline of information for startups in our database. And then after that, we're going to look into AWS to actually deploying some of this information, some of the uh, visualizations that we built into a static site uh, and have users actually interact with it. So uh, stick around. If you have comments, please leave them below. Like and subscribe helps me out. Let me know if there's a data set uh, that you'd like to go through. Uh, I have some recent data sets in mind that I'd sort of like to take a detour and investigate. But uh, hopefully this is a, a good orientation into Bokeh, pulling data from a Mongo database and visualizing it. So take care, guys.